Okay, good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Percato from the Office of Strategic Planning, and I'd like to welcome you here to our third meeting of the Northeast Area Elementary Boundary Study. We truly appreciate your presence. Um, your participation is, is what makes this product project successful, as, as well as to all those joining us virtually at home. Uh, a few housekeeping notes, please. Uh, we hope you all sign the sign-in sheets up front uh, as you came in for our committee members. Uh, in the event of an emergency that we have to leave the room, we do have emergency exits out to the courtyard or out to the, uh, the front of the building. Um, if, if the uh, fire alarm should sound and we have to evacuate, we will proceed out to the parking lot and we'll use those sign-in sheets to verify that everyone is uh, accounted for. Uh, restrooms, should you need them, are out the hall to the left and around the corner, uh, but please do not proceed to any other areas of the building. Um, our meeting tonight is covered by our BCPS TV team with uh, audio and video. Thank you very much for their assistance. Um, that is accessible to all our folks at home joining us virtually, and our website, at uh, uh, the link is right at the bottom of the main page. Uh, uh, has all the materials necessary to follow along with all our previous meetings, all the video archives of our previous meetings, and the, the link to our live session tonight. Um, if you would like to speak, we do want to make sure your voice is captured for our folks at home, so please raise your hand. Uh, James or Matt will direct you to one of the microphones uh, that we have around, but please do not pick the microphones up out of the Holders. We're trying to, uh, number one, protect the equipment, and number two, uh, pr keep a contamination vector out of there. So please leave the microphones in the holder, if you would, please. Um, a few uh, word on our COVID mitigation strategies. Uh, this meeting is in person only for our committee members and staff members. All others are joining, joining virtually. Uh, we're practicing social distancing of six feet. Uh, we may have some small group committee exercises that compromise that for some short periods of time, but that will be timed and limited. Uh, we'll be wearing masks at all times while we're in the buildings. If you do need a mask break, you're welcome to step out in the courtyard. Uh, there's hand sanitizer on all the tables. There are individual uh, materials and supplies, so you shouldn't need to share supplies with the exception of the, the large format maps. And if you should find yourself over the next, uh, throughout the duration of the committee meetings, if you should find yourself in receipt of a positive COVID test or are in close proximity to uh, close contact with someone who has received a positive COVID test, please contact Mike Godfordson in our Office of Strategic Planning and he will coordinate the necessary communications with our Office of Health Department. Once again, I thank you so much for joining us this, this evening and with that, I'm going to turn it over to our Cropper GIS team, Mr. James Cooper. Mm. Again, thank you all for coming out this evening. Uh, we know you're taking time away from your family, school work, and things of that nature. So uh, your work is much appreciated and doesn't go unnoticed. So just looking at the agenda for tonight, uh, we have a review of new information. Uh, there's a new stat handout in your binders that has the, uh, uh, the option tables. And we're, we're going to be bringing forward two new draft options tonight, draft options D and E. Uh, and these draft options were just created off the feedback that you guys gave to us from the previous meetings on things you liked from the draft options A through uh, C. Uh, we're going to get together in your working groups as such uh, so you guys can collaborate with one another uh, and review these uh, new draft options that we have here for you tonight. Uh, then we want to get together and discuss everybody's initial thoughts on these draft options um, and then adjourn uh, to our next meeting. So again here, we're gonna re review the enrollment statistics. Uh, your drafts, uh, the option handout, uh, statistic handout in your binder uh, looks like this, the cover page. Um, and in there you'll have the, the previous draft options that we went over at our meeting two, uh, as well as the new draft options D and E. Um, and we just want you to review them in the same manner, uh, get your initial feedback on how you feel about the boundaries and how the numbers add up. Um, and, and share your limitations and advantages um, for each option that you see. So just to give you a little overview of where we're at in the process, uh, this is the calendar here. 
we're, we're, we're getting to that midway point in this process. Uh, we're here at meeting three. Um, and uh, the, the date that you want to kind of be cognizant of is, is the first public information session uh, that's scheduled for no November the 3rd. Um, so as we work through today's meeting and the next, um, we want to try to um, eventually get to the point where we have, two, where we feel comfortable with two or three options to go public with at that public information um, meeting. So after today, we'll, we would have reviewed five draft options and our goal is to not to pick the best option yet, but to just try to get that down to two or three options we feel confident enough to share with the public um, on November the 3rd. So just a quick brief overview. This is the Northeast Area uh, Boundary Study. Um, and these are the participating schools. Uh, we have a new Northeast Elementary School that is being built um, and is gonna be located here along the, the current boundary of uh, Fullerton Elementary School in Elmwood. And then we also have Red House Run Elementary School that is uh, being expanded upon to accommodate more students in the region. Uh, so along with those two, uh, the new, new built elementary school and the expansion of Red House Run, uh, Elmwood Elementary School, Fullerton, Joppa View, McCormick, Perry Hall Elementary School, Shady Spring Elementary School, and Vincent Farm are the other schools in this region that we'll be studying. And we always want to stay uh, cognizant of the boundary study object objective. Uh, this is a community-based, uh, comprehensive boundary study, um, and we're tasked with meeting these key objectives. Uh, we want to reduce overcrowding in the region. Uh, currently, uh, seven of the eight schools in our region are over 100% capacity, so the need for uh, additional seats in the region is essential. Um, we want to create viable and successful boundaries to effectively utilize the added capacity of the new Northeast Elementary School and Red House Run. And then we also want to support the diversity among the schools that reflect the community and the school system. Um, so here we'll, we'll, we're going to uh, dive into reviewing these options uh, that, are, that are located in your binder. And uh, I'll kind of go over the new draft options, D and E, to kind of give you an overview of what you may see in the tables and the maps and some, some good pointers to note out. Um, just want to remember that Everything is a draft. Um, things can change. Uh, we can eliminate options, uh, uh, remove options, or add new options, or edit uh, existing options to make them better align with the boundary study objective and considerations. Uh, nothing's written in stone. We're not here to make a decision today, but we want to work through and review these options to eventually work, th uh, work to get to a recommendation option uh, to, to recommend. So the additional uh, draft options you hear, see here, option D and E, um, both of these options were created based on the, the feedback we received from the committee at the last meeting and discussions. Um, some of the variables that led to the creation of these options, D and E, um, that were brought to our attention was um, from some of the committee members were wanting to preserve all the walk zones. So you'll see here in option D and E, uh, once we get to the maps, that the Fullerton Elementary School walk zone is being maintained. Uh, in options A through C, um, there were a handful of students, approximately 35 K through five students that were being impacted and potentially sent to Elmwood uh, in options A through C. Um, so in options D through E, we got those students back within their walk zone and attending Fullerton um, to maximize all walk zones within the region. Um, another uh, driving point for creating options D and E was creating Fullerton, uh, making Fullerton's elementary school zone more compact. Um, in options A through C, uh, there was some concern about the, how far Fullerton stretched north going up towards Perry Hall Elementary School. Um, some members didn't, didn't think that that was a viable uh, uh, zone for that elementary school. So you'll see here in options D and E, uh, once we get to the maps, that we pull Fullerton back uh, to along the lines of this existing boundary um, to, to, to not have it stretch as far north. Uh, as a result of that, the new Northeast School is the one that kind of extends uh, to that northern area along Perry Hall Elementary School in these options. Um, for options D and E, another driving variable in creating these was the elimination of the satellite boundaries 
uh, uh, for McCormick Elementary School and Elmwood Elementary School. Uh, and options D and E, these satellite boundaries are eliminated. Um, uh, McCormick uh, takes, uh, eliminates some of those elementary, uh, I mean, satellite boundaries. And also the newly expanded upon Red House Run um, fills in those gaps so that there, there are no longer existing satellite boundaries for Elmwood or McCormick Elementary School. Another driving factor for options D and E uh, is the improved consideration for traffic flow for Java View Elementary School and Perio Elementary School. Um, based off the feedback from committee meeting two, um, there were some comments that uh, some of the members actually liked the boundaries for Perry Hall Elementary School and Joppa View and option A. So we took those boundaries from option A for Joppa View Elementary School and Perry Hall and, and made those boundaries the same in options D and E. Uh, since the, it was a good, it was a lot of positive feedback on the way the, the shape of those options for those two schools in that area. Um, and as a result, it's improved the consideration for traffic flow in those areas. Um, so as you go and review the draft options, we have uh, eight and a half by 11 maps that are in your binder as well. So you can get a good close up view of what option D and E look, look like. Um, these option maps are also available online on the interactive web map at croppermap.com uh, slash BCPS uh, NE 2021. And on the web map, you can go in and actually be able to toggle through from the current zone boundaries to these options. And I like to click through back and forth to kind of see what areas are changing and also to compare uh, one option to another. Uh, there are copies of these handouts, including small and large format maps. Uh, that are posted on the Boundary Study webpage at BCPS website. Um, and that's on the bcps.org under the highlights sec section. Uh, James, excuse me. Um, one, th one point I wanted to make on the prior slide that I don't think you had touched on was the option E with the Eastern Family Resource Center. That's oh, yeah. something that exists in option E, where it's, you guys had talked about that Family Resource Center, uh, the value of that being in Shady Spring and it wasn't in Shady Spring in the options. And so in option D, it's not, that area is in the new school, but in option E, we modeled it so that area stays in Shady Spring. But yes. just wanted to add that point. Yep, yep, that's a good point. So again, when you're analyzing these options, you wanna look at them in, in a few different ways. You wanna study the, the geography, uh, look at the, the shape of the, the, the draft boundary options, um, see what roads and networks are, are used to actually bound certain school, uh, school zone areas, attendance areas. And then you wanna also study the tables and you wanna review the balance of enrollment. Um, you wanna see if, if there's an, a good equal uh, balance of utilization among all the schools in the study area. And if there aren't, you wanna try to investigate and see why. Uh, is, is this something that we potentially can fix with the change of a planning block here or there? Um, and things of that nature. And while you're studying the geography, the maps, and then you're also corresponding that and relating that to the tables, uh, you also wanna always be cognizant of our objectives and considerations. Um, uh, the, basically the rules to follow as we potentially uh, change attendance areas. Uh, you wanna understand how these draft options support the boundary study objecti objectives and considerations. And if there are some ways where it's lacking or not uh, supporting it, you wanna look at ways we can uh, 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 examine ways to improve and, and change attendance boundaries so that they more align with the boundary study objectives and considerations. So here's the current utilization, just to give you a quick, quick uh, understanding of where these current schools uh, stand as, as, in regards to enrollment and utilization. Um, this, this, this table here under the enrollment utilization, these are the numbers that I like to focus on the most, just to give you an idea of how uh, under or over capacity a school may be. And looking here, it, it shows that seven of the eight schools are, are well over 100% capacity. So there's a, an, an essential need for additional seats in the region. So as you get into your statistical handout and you start to review the tables uh, for these draft options, um, this is a table you'll see, which is an estimated enrollment table. This gives you an idea of the headcount of the uh, total enrollment headcount uh, 
of what, what the estimated enrollment would be for a given school in each particular option. Um, the numbers I like to focus on here, I kind of like to look at, okay, what's the number in this column for option D and, and related to the school? And then I like to compare this number to the adjusted state rated capacity because that gives you an idea of how many seats that school, uh, that school can accommodate. And this gives you an idea of, of how many students will be in that school. So kind of like to relate those numbers and see, hey, is this number larger than the, than the adjusted state rated capacity? And if so, is there ways to improve it and get it down? Um, you'll see here in the estimated enrollment for, for the new draft options, D and E, that you'll find that all these numbers uh, fall at or under the adjusted state rated capacity. So we're staying in line with the objectives of uh, giving uh, equal balance and utilization to all schools in the region. Another table you'll see is the estimated utilization. Uh, and this is just taking that enrollment number and dividing it by the adjusted state rated capacity and, and making it a percentage so you can understand how full a school may be. So you'll see here in option D, we bring a good balanced utilization to, to all schools in the region. Um, for example, Elmwood Elementary School is at 97% in option D, and correspondingly is at 93% in option E. Um, and to give you an idea of the new Northeast Elementary School, in option D, it's uh, opening up at 90, estimated at 92% utilization, which is right on par with the district average. Uh, and then also in option E, you'll see that the new elementary school is estimated to open up at 93% as well. So it's, it's falling right in line and staying in line with our objectives and consideration. Another number you like to, we want to, to be cognizant of as you look at the estimated utilization in these options is, um, you'll see our Red House Run Elementary School in option E would open up at estimated enrollment of 99% utilization. So it's getting right up there to that max capacity and that's a number you kind of want to look at as you examine the boundaries of option E for Red House Run and, and, and you know, try to make cognitive decisions on do we need to give it a little extra relief considering potential future uh, development in the area or do we feel comfortable with this utilization uh, estimated utilization number in this option. Uh, some, some more tables that you will find in your stat handout are the demographic tables. Uh, these give you an idea of the percent minority, uh, percent free lunch, and uh, percent English uh, language learner students that would attend a, a given school in each option. So you'll see here that in option D and E, um, take for example the new Northeast Elementary School. In option D, they would have an estimated uh, enrollment of 41% for free and reduced lunch students, which is, which is very close and near to the district average of 49%. So our goal is when, when we're uh, drafting these options and, and making changes, we, we don't want to defer too far from what each school is currently at. So, but if we are gonna defer from it, we wanna try to get it as close to the district average as possible. But you'll see here with option D and E that for the most part, these, num these numbers do not change far from where they're at currently in all three categories. Here we have student impact estimates uh, and you'll see tables like this in your handout that give you an idea of how many students will be impacted. Uh, with a new elementary school being built and one being expanded upon, to accommodate a lot more students, uh, you can expe expect that it's gonna be a pretty large number of students and families that will be impacted. Um, but you'll see here in option D and E that we um, were able to give balance to a lot of schools utilization wise and, and actually bring down that impact number compared to options A through C that we reviewed at our previous meeting. So take for example, option, G, option D is expected to impact a total of 969 K through five living attendance students. Um, and these tables here that are gray and green, they give you an idea, while, this, while the table on the left gives you an idea of the total number of students impacted in each option, these tables give you a breakdown to kind of understand what partic how many particular students at a given school are impacted and what school would they be going to in an option. 
So take, for example, uh, in option D, uh, Vincent Farms is impacted uh, an area uh, right there along the 95. And you'll see that 122 students would actually be changing from Vincent Farms and going to the new Northeast Elementary School zone. And this option. Um, there are a bunch, uh, many areas that won't change, so you'll see here these, this, the, uh, the, the row here that's uh, all green. Those show students that are not impacted, and therefore their totals are not included in here, so they're not affected by any of these boundary changes. Another table to examine uh, as you review these draft options are feeder tables. These give you an idea of how many kids um, percentage-wise will uh, feed into the, the uh, middle school from elementary school. So currently you, you have Elmwood Elementary School that feeds into Golden Ring Middle School uh, with 40% of students attending Golden Ring Middle School and then 60% of students from Elmwood Elementary School attending Parkville Middle School. Um, with the, with the new elementary school being built, and especially the new, new Northeast Elementary School expanding a large area in the region, um, there's expected, ex expectation of some splits may occur. But as you see here in option D, um, the new Northeast Elementary School actually feeds into three middle schools, uh, with 32% going to Golden Ring Middle School, 23% going to Parkville Middle School, and then another 45% from the new Northeast Elementary School going to Perry Hall Middle School. Um, so it, it, it feeds into three different middle schools, but if you look at the percentages here, it's if you're going to have a school split three ways, you want to try to get it as close to 33% as possible. Um, and these splits are, are very, very close to balance, especially if you were to compare them to maybe Vincent Farms, which currently splits three-way and, um, and it does split three-way in these options. Um, it's a little bit more overwhelmingly uh, feeding into Middle River Middle School compared to Golden Ring and Perry Hall. And we want to try to have our kids uh, um, go to middle schools with, with other uh, faces, familiar faces. So creating balance splits, if there is a split that has to exist, is always one of our goals and objectives. We also have uh, a, t a total number of K-5 living attendant students that are within walk zones. Um, currently there are 795 uh, K through fifth students that uh, live in within a walk zone. And that was also a note that some committee members brought up uh, when reviewing options A through C is that that number reduces to 760 in options A through C. But you'll see here in option D and E that we're able to get those uh, Fullerton uh, elementary school kids back into their walk zone and attend in Fullerton. So it brings our total, walk, uh, total kids living within a walk zone uh, to, to max capacity at the moment compared to what current zones is. So 794 kids will be within walk zones uh, in options D and E. So now I'm kind of going to give you an overview of uh, these two new draft options, starting here with option D. Uh, so some areas you wanna, that you want to see that are changing, this area here, and options A through C is actually a walk zone for Fullerton Elementary School. Um, and in options A through C, we had those kids uh, potentially going to Elmwood Elementary School. Um, that was a concern by some committee members and we were able to fix that in this option to have those kids stay within Fullerton and, and uh, coincidentally stay in within their walk zone. Uh, another area to kind of look at that changes with options D is this area here uh, along Route 1 going north towards Perry Hall Elementary School. Um, there was some concern that this, uh, that, that Fullerton was reaching too far north and the, the, the shape of the boundary wasn't appealing for some committee members. So you'll see here in option D that we, we brought back Fullerton closer to where uh, it currently is bounded by in the current zones. And then we brought the new Northeast Elementary School zone and extended it out a little further to kind of help give relief for Perry Hall and also populate the new Northeast Elementary School. Another area that you'll see here in option D is uh, a, a change area is that the new Northeast doesn't extend as far up going into Vincent Farms and it actually only in, uh, pulls in some communities here just east of the 95. 
the new Northeast also extends south to give relief to, sh to Shady Spring and this option. And you'll see McCormick also has a more uniform and tightly packed zone that helps eliminate some of the satellite boundaries that currently exist in this region. So some of the advantages are Elmwood and McCormick satellite areas no longer exist. Uh, capacity relief is provided to all schools within the, the study area. Uh, no school is at or above 100% capacity in option D. Um, it impacts the least uh, number of students among all, all options. Um, with such a large study area, um, we, we, we understand that it's gonna impact a lot of families. So anytime we can get that impact number down um, is always a, a big positive when it comes to drafting options. And then another positive is always the, that all walkers are currently in their walk zone in this option. So all walk zones for all schools in the region are, are, are being used to their maximum efficiency. Uh, some of the limitations are uh, the Vincent Farm Elementary School three-way split still exists. Uh, that, that was something that we weren't able to eliminate in this option, but uh, we could potentially examine this and see if there's a way to get that three-way feeder split uh, decreased. And then also the new Northeast Elementary School has a three-way feeder pattern uh, split in this option. Um, it feeds into to, to three different schools in option, in option D. Um, but on a positive note, the balance of the feeder uh, pattern is, is, is pretty uniform for the new Northeast Elementary School. So now I'm gonna go here to option D and give you an, I mean option E and give you an overview. And I kind of like to flip back and forth to kind of give you an idea of what areas change um, for option D compared to E. And you'll see here the big, er the big change areas for option uh, E are uh, this area here along the 95 and the currently Vincent Farms. And then also this area here, the Shady Springs and Red House Run, this is along Golden Ring Spring Road, uh, Golden Ring Road. So some of the advantages with option E uh, include Elmwood and McCormick ele uh, Elementary School satellite areas no longer exist. Uh, those are eliminated th in this option with McCormick, um, keeping these communities together and going to the same elementary school. And then the, uh, with the expanded capacity of Red House Run Elementary School, they're able to eliminate this large area, which is currently Elmwood in, the set in a, a satellite area. So those, those students there and those communities there will then attend Red House Run Elementary School in this draft option. Uh, capacity relief is provided to all the schools within the study area. Um, all schools are at or, at or under 100% capacity in option E. Uh, another positive is that it impacts the second fewest number of students among all of the options. Um, at 1,069 uh, K through fifth students potentially being impacted, uh, that, 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 that number is is lower than options A through C. So it's, it's, we're definitely um, improving upon aligning with the boundary study objectives and considerations. And as stated before, uh, all current walkers are in their walk zone in this option as we were able to get those Fullerton students back in their walk zone in this option. Uh, some of the limitations are the new Northeast Elementary School has a three-way feeder pattern is split. Um, that's noted here, you'll see in option E, uh, the new, North, new Northeast uh, feeds into three schools. Um, but again, as I noted what option D, uh, the balance is, is, is pretty uniform uh, among all three schools. Uh, Vincent Farms feeder pattern split still exists. Uh, Vincent Farms still feeds into three middle schools and it was not eliminated in this option. And then the Red House Run is estimated to open at uh, 99%, so that's near full capacity um, in option E. So that's something to be cognizant of and, and, and for you to kind of weigh your options on if you feel comfortable with that number or if you feel like Red House Run is, uh, would need a little bit more relief in this option to, to accommodate for a potential future growth in the area. Okay, do I have any questions at the moment? Uh, anything I need to go back over or miss? So again, we're gonna break into groups here soon. Um, just remember effective collaboration. I don't need to spend too much time on this slide. Uh, 
um, the meetings have been positive and you guys work well together. Um, just remember to be mindful of everybody's opinions. Uh, we're going to break into our small groups as we did before. Um, we want you guys to collaborate in your working teams. Um, you get up, we have plot maps in each section for you guys to get up and, and get a more in-depth view of these draft options. Um, please feel free to mark them up with markers, sticky notes, um, anything that can give us a little bit more information on how you feel about each draft option. After each group is done reviewing it, we will have a discussion as a whole, um, have one person come speak up on each group's behalf uh, on, on the totality of how they feel about each draft option. And with that being said, I'll let you guys have your way. Thank you. For reference, uh, options D and E are the ones hanging up near your stations. But if you need to refer back to A, A B, and C, they are on your tables the, the, in, in the uh, order of large maps that are on the tables.
I see a lot of great conversations going on. We'd like to uh, ask you to give it about 10 minutes to wrap up your conversations um, for our reporters, get your reporting talking points together, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up and uh, come back to our groups in about 10 minutes.
about five more, about five minutes. If you guys could just wrap up uh, your summarize your notes and on the on the plots, and we'll regroup in about five minutes. Okay, if we could start making our way back to our seats, we'll get our reporting going. We will position the microphones near the maps, so again, I'll remind you, please leave the microphones, if you can, in their holders rather than take them out and handle them. Okay, uh, I think we're I think we're about ready to uh, to report out to the whole. 
So uh, which, group, which group wants to go first in terms of uh, reporting out to the whole? We really appreciate, uh, I could see a lot of constructive conversations and diving into the maps, it's really good stuff. Since you guys are all seated, how about, what, does this group want to go first? Who wants to, uh, who wants to talk about some of their conversations uh, at the microphone? Anybody in this group want to volunteer? There's a microphone right over here. I'll pull it up here a little bit so you can face the crowd. Oh, good, good. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot we're not touching anything. Okay, so looking at D and E, um, I, I, I work at Red House around, my kids go there. And obviously I don't wanna see us open at 99% capacity, um, especially because we're gonna be a new school. We're probably gonna get a lot of shared domiciles from people who want their kids to attend a brand new school. Um, and those numbers that we get at the beginning of the year, they just increase throughout the year. We get more and more students um, on a weekly basis. So option D also keeps the levels of the demographics kind of even. There's no big jumps in our ELL learners, free and reduced lunch um, students, where option E, those numbers do jump up or down pretty drastically across the board. Um, but those extra 100 plus students that we would be absorbing from Fontana Village, um, it, it's just, it pushes us too high. And we were kind of like trying to arrange some things so that Shady Spring could still keep the Eastern Resource Center because I think it's great that they, you know, they, they want those students and, and they like the relationship that they've built. Um, so we had a couple ideas of how things could kind of shift, but that still puts Shady Spring at a higher um, percentage than anybody else. And, and that's it. Um, you you can you clap. <laughs> did you? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, did you have, when you said about, uh, did you have any suggested changes or things that you guys looked at and said, this is a good move, maybe we should think about we it? We did. So um, this area right here, if we shifted that to Elmwood, and then there's a whole area up at the top of Elmwood, thank you, thank you, Julie, okay. that could go to the Northeast School. Yes, and then the area that the Eastern Resource Center is currently in, that could switch back over to Shady Spring and it just increases Shady Springs numbers. So everybody else kind of like evens out except for Shady Spring. Um, so I don't know if there's ways that, that, you know, people could look at that and see who could be shifted out of Shady Spring, but it doesn't seem like okay. it would be an easy task. Okay. And you have those marked up on the map, like arrows, things we like do. that on the, okay. Yeah, and there, are, um, there are circles and arrows. Yep, that's our post okay, so these post-it notes is also it's your also notes for this, for that particular map. It's more specific than gotcha. the arrows and circles. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great, great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, does anybody else from any other group want to comment on anything, any remarks that they made? About, about the map? Yes, ma'am. Um, and there's a, let's get the microphone set up for you over here. It's right over a, along the wall there. Shifting, is this on? Yeah. We were kind of looking at shifting things up as well, which pushed some students into Shady Spring. Um, and but I don't know if the numbers on the map for student capacity or enrollment are correct. So, because when we added the numbers for Shady Spring, we came up with only 363 students and we asked why it was so different from the number that is listed in the book and the answer that was given us is there's 100 students out of zone that attend Shady Spring and that seemed improbable <laughs> at, yes. at best and then when we looked in the book it says there's 12 students who are out of zone so I'm not sure what the correct numbers are but if there's only 12 students out of zone then pushing those students up into the Shady Spring zone would not even put Shady Spring at capacity and so when we were talking about that one of the explanations could be 
the number of students coming out in. Um, there could also be maybe potentially a planning block that's not labeled there, something like that. But we will take a look and make sure that everything is adding up correctly as, uh, as you indicated, and make sure that there's no issue with that. Um, yeah, yeah, you, uh, you might as well continue on since you guys are at, have the floor. Um, please continue. Um, to be totally fair, I really didn't look at D very much. I really spend a lot of my time looking at E with people. Um, in addition to the numbers discrepancy, mm -hmm. which will be worked out, that would make it really easy to pull from Planning block 809 to alleviate the possible already at capacity issue with Red House Run and put them into Shady Springs. Another thing that was brought up was there's a planning block um, 61 with the Eagle Walk Apartments that's supposed to go to Elmwood Elementary. And what happens is the, the buses would go up Lillian Holt that entire way just to pick up that one little development that's only a half a mile from the new Northeast Elementary. So it was suggested to take those 61 and put them in the new Northeast. And then, of course, you have to remove from the new Northeast. So we took from a spot in King's Court and gave them back to um, Vincent Farm because they are at 85% capacity with the planning, with this draft E, and therefore they still would be well under capacity, pretty well under capacity. Um, oh yeah. um, another concern that was brought up was about uh, the, the types of housing that are going to be attending the new Northeast Elementary. Um, if you're familiar with the areas, it's a lot of single family homes and not very many apartment buildings. So questions about you know the types of homes that we're choosing. And however, the, the numbers, when you look at percent minority, free, free and reduced lunch and English language learners does seem pretty stable, but it's just something to of note. Thank you, and you do have the some markups on the map for things that we can model an option to bring back yes. to take a look. Okay. And uh, and then, yes, ma'am, did you want to add something? So moving forward, I'll, well, I'm breaking a rule. Do not touch the it's mic. Okay. Do not move <laughs> the mic. We were wondering if at all possible, the next time we meet, if we could identify um, areas that are transitional like apartment buildings, if that could be clearly noted on these maps so that we can make a more educated and holistic, uh, get a holistic view of what communities are being affected. The reason why we say this in our group was because we noticed in PB, uh, I can't see, I'm sorry, my glasses are foggy, but if, if we could actually just get some more information about um, what apartments are being affected or not affected because it seems as if, as we look at uh, that, we're looking at these boundary lines, a lot of homeowners are going to the new school, but there aren't maybe equitable options for people who are living in apartments, which at, we always want to think about equity when we're making these decisions. Absolutely, we, we can uh, look at putting a map that shows single versus multifamily residential we do have the zoning map that shows residential areas and industrial and agricultural but it doesn't break down s single versus multifamily so that's something that we'll follow up with you on yes ma'am any other comments that you guys had uh, or or any input from your from your group that that you guys were talking about around the maps so it sounds like you spent more time on option e looking at option e uh, and you do have some markups on D that I see there, but as, but as you guys were exploring the maps. Um, anybody from either of these two groups want to comment on anything that this group said? Yes, ma'am. Um, could you do the, could you, since we're being live streamed, we do have to have it on the microphone. So, I guess my question is, are we looking to group living situations together? Like, are, are, we, are we saying that because most of that Northeast area is single family homes, we want to keep it that way? 
or that it would be unfair to the, the children who live in? So contrary to that, just the opposite. Okay. We're okay. just saying, let's look okay. at what's going on. I know we're up at MAPS and we're all talking about maybe um, things that may um, be beneficial to kids and what's most beneficial. But as, as we were looking at the map, we were looking at, we dug a little deeper and we just wanted to make decisions that were equitable for all students that may be affected, that's all. Oh. And as you indicated, you know, we, we study the impact on socioeconomics and things like that through some of the, st st the statistics that we've got. And uh, so we'd like to see what the impact of that is. But it certainly is notable to understand the composition of single versus multifamily and, and how that lays out across the district. So certainly something that we'll follow up to further inform you and help guide your decision making on this. Yes. Not in regards to the map, but maybe to address your question a little bit too as well. The reason to consider like apartments versus single family homes has a lot to do with mobility, right? right. So um, I'm a school that a lot of us have a very high mobility rate right. of students coming in and students coming out. So as you're talking about continuing to have a culture and a community and opening a new school with a culture and community, it is important to talk about m the possibility of mobility rates in all of these neighborhoods and schools. And actually, one thing that you could add to also, we had a discussion around the map about um, the, the family shelter. And we were, t we were talking, uh, I was talking with this group about the family shelter and option E uh, going to Shady Spring, but I think, believe you're at Fullerton, is that correct? And that you had, you had mentioned that the family shelter serves students who uh, are from the family shelter may attend various schools throughout this area, not just they're not just zoned to one school, is that correct? Correct. So. And I thought that was a valuable conversation so that we I had. So I have students that attend, that are in the shelter that attend Fullerton. Uh -huh. I have students that are in the Towson shelter that attend Fullerton. I okay. have students that are in a Baltimore City shelter that attend Fullerton. I have students in a shelter on the northwest side of town near Owings Mills that, that attend, attend Fullerton. Fullerton. Right, okay. Um, okay, well good stuff. Uh, any other comments about just regarding this, this, this group or discussions or anything else? Why don't we go ahead and go to this team? What did you, uh, you guys, one of you guys want to volunteer and summarize some of the conversations you guys were having or any, any comments about the maps? I see some, some post-it notes up there. Okay. Um, just in general that um, um, there's, I guess we, maybe we came to the conclusion with this, that there's gonna be a traffic issue, I mean, uh, transportation issue probably no matter where you send uh, this group of students regardless, whether they go to Northeast or Fullerton, there's gonna be a transportation issue because of traffic in general and how transportation is currently um, flowing. Um, another thing we discussed was um, the same thing, similar to them, um, of the 105, the PD 809, the 105 kids to go there, um, moving them to Shady Springs, would, which would uh, eventually help out the issues with Red House Run. Um, another thing we, um, yes, another thing we, us was um, in that same vein when you move move when you add that group in um, consider just making the uh, Eastern Shores Resource Center just making it a set of like I know we don't want to do that but maybe just for that just center if that's a possibility that's not like you're moving a making a whole neighborhood it's a group Mm -hmm. And that might be the most efficient way to fix that problem without having to really worry about overrun, overrunning Red House Run or doing too much damage to Shady Springs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty much kind of alleviate that problem. Ah, the new, the new, the 
development. Um, concerns about the new development that's going to be being built here and that putting Northeast eventually over, considering, uh -huh. as I said, I mean, I, I tend to think, like Kyle Cranch tend to think, if I'm a new young family, I'm looking for new construction, there's a new school, just mm -hmm. tend to like new shiny stuff. It just, mm -hmm. I just tend to think that's just how it goes. And mm -hmm. the expectations of how many we are expecting may not be how much actually happens. Uh -huh. Cer certainly a draw to the, a new school, it, you know, it does have some attraction to it, you know, certainly. And, um, and regarding the family shelter, I think that the, as some of the conversations tonight were around that and how the, that shelter serves schools across this area. So even if it may be within a zone, it may not have as much of an impact where all the students there may not go to that zone school. So that will, may help resolve that consideration you're talking about, about making it its own satellite may not be necessary because of the nature of how students are enrolled from that shelter where they, where they end up at school. And they, they, they don't all go to the school that the zone in necessarily, they may, they may attend various schools throughout the study area. Um, but so just something, it's something to consider, to, to, you know, to think about. I don't think creating a satellite area for just that, for that, that, uh, that particular area is ideal or doable for us, but it's something that we need to be considerate of and, and be mindful of and how that uh, feeds schools and how it may impact the utilization of schools. So it's a, it's a good point. And you guys are thinking out of the box, really thinking about ways to, to, to adhere to our objectives and our criteria. So it's all really good stuff. Um, and it looks like we've got some good feedback that we could take and, and generate uh, a couple of more maps to bring back to the next meeting just to see we'll have a, a large body of maps at that time. And then, um, and then at that point of the next meeting, we'll start looking at narrowing down, trying to see what, how many maps we want to take the public info session, uh, usually around three maps, four maps sometimes. But you guys can really decide how many maps we want to take to the public. Did you have something else you wanted to add? Another point? I'm sorry, one more thing. Um, another thing we were uh, a major, uh, concerned uh, regarding Red House Run, um, with it being at 99% and they have, I'm sorry, yes, thank you. Um, the SEL regional program, I don't know if that's calculated in there, but that's an additional set of students that right now, I, from my understanding, she said is not high now, but it was in previous years and probably will mm -hmm. expect to grow back. Yes, and I think that the capacity of Red House Run has been adjusted. It, we reduced the number of seats at Red House Run and our planning capacity for us to account for students coming in from that program. So that so we, we've proactively adjusted the capacity for, for the study so that you guys don't fill up the school and then there's no seats there for the program, the students coming in from the program. But it's still a 99%. I think all three groups have, have indicated that as a concern, having it be so close for the various reasons you guys have stated. So, um, so but that's uh, definitely a good, a good point. Does anybody else want to add anything or comment on anything that this, the, the blue group commented on? All right. Yeah, if you can just toggle the next one. So uh, like I was saying, we'll, we're going to uh, take all this good feedback that you guys have provided and look at creating some more options to see some modifications of options, building, building some options as we get closer to try to focus on our objectives and criteria. So we really appreciate all your time and putting into this and giving us your feedback and marking on the maps. You guys are really helping us out a lot and helping out your community. Um, our next meeting is on October 27th, so in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll get back together at that meeting, and then at that meeting we are going to have a, a narrowing process or an exercise because we've got A through E right now. We'll probably have a couple more coming in. So we're going to start working at that meeting to try to whittle down the, the options and, and figure out which ones we want to take to the public. 
even then, there'll still be draft. We still have time to make changes and try to figure out a recommendation. But So there's time, but uh, does anybody have anything else they want to comment on or, or say before we let you guys go home? So we'll be back here on the 27th, uh, same time and same place. And thank you guys so much for your time. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Have a good night.